Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of She Power right here on WTV Kenya. I'm your host Linda Kruger. Now today we focus at women in comedy. What is their role? We have the general assumption both locally and internationally that women cannot be funny. Well, I'm going to be finding more about this and today on set I'm joined by Emmeline Achien Simba who is an upcoming comedian. Welcome to She Power. Thank you. Um, tell us a bit about yourself. You know, that's very intriguing. Um, um, like I said in the introduction, yeah. we have the assumption that women can't be funny. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Tell us. It's just an assumption. But uh, I think women can be funny. I think I'm funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, humorous. And joking. And um, I extend that to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's wonderful. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up um, Doing deciding this. that exactly you're going to be a comedian. I'm Alina Chiang, as I've said, and I am a blogger. I blog mostly about humor, comedy, jokes, and funny things and things that make people laugh mm -hmm. at the Bloggers Association of Kenya. Mm -hmm. mm, before that, I used to teach. I used to teach English and literature. Mm -hmm. And a bit of CRE. Let's just say before I decided to write, mm -hmm. I used to teach at a local high school near where I stay. Mm -hmm. But I still felt I love writing a lot. Mm -hmm. So when I found out there is this Bloggers Association of Kenya, I just decided to register and write. Yeah. Wow, amazing. So you were a teacher and then yeah, before, the true yeah. calling came through and yeah. you decided to, you know, go fully into com comedy. Yes. Was that decision hard for you? You know, because um, I think a, a teaching job is very structural and, you know, this is how everything goes and you're, you're, you're assured of, of a check at the end of the month. Was it a difficult decision to make? It wasn't difficult uh -huh. because uh, it reached a time. I really, I was teaching, but I still felt there is something else I should do. Mm -hmm. So I was still, I wasn't stable there. I was, I knew there is something else. There is something else and it will come with time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until I found that I can write these things. But uh, previously, I've gone to one or two, uh, I call them, they call them auditions or talent shows. Mm -hmm. And they said I can do it, so it gave me morale to Nini. It Go gave ahead. me the morale to know that as time goes by, yes, I can do it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That it wasn't a difficult decision. Very interesting. Yeah. Did you have support uh, from you know friends, family when you, when you ventured out into it? Because you know, if you were telling me as yes. let's say your sister or your mother, I'd think, um, <laughs> Chiang, <laughs> really. <laughs> they they laugh, they laugh, uh -huh. they they laugh and think um, it's a waste of time, or they think uh, look for something serious. This is just a joke. Mm -hmm. So to some extent, they think it's a joke. Mm -hmm. But uh, when they see at least they see at least uh, you've done it nearly two years, they are not seeing you stopping or going behind. You just keeping on to keeping on. Mm -hmm. Then they think, it's not bad, she's on the right road, mm -hmm. let her take the road. Mm -hmm. So at first they were laughing or joking about it, but now, though I'm still on the way going to oh, yeah. where I'm going to, mm -hmm. they are calm, they are just fine. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yes. No comedy. Yes. To the viewers watching, yes. and um, I know, like, like maybe like a majority of them, including myself, yeah. we'd want to understand what comedy is. Yes. We are um, streamlined to what we see on television. We yeah. see stand-up comedy, and yes. we have very few productions, uh, humorous or comical productions in terms yes. of TV shows. Maybe you can uh, give us uh, a deeper understanding. I love laughing and I love fun. <laughs> I, love, I love making jokes and I like to see humor in every situation. Mm -hmm. Good or bad, there is humor in that. There is humor in everything. So I tend to see the humor in everything. 
and practice that writing it acting it laughing it but it's not it's not hard but i think you you have to have it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's not hard but i think you have to have it in you you got to got something to be able to be yes yes comical yeah to be able to be humorous and to see the humor in things and to be comical so i can't go to school to you know study you comedy. can't go to school <laughs> to study comedy yes wow. you have to have it inside you uh -huh. so if you have it inside you even if you go to school you'll still let the schooling part and follow the part the humorous comical part wow it is inside you yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yes. Now you're here. Mm -hmm. You've said two years. Two years back, you've made the decision to leave teaching and go into into comedy um, full time. Share with us your first um, experience. Did you um, write first? Did you perform maybe? On smaller platforms like twice or thrice, uh -huh. I've performed, but smaller platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the response of the audience after seeing that it's fine with me i love it mm -hmm. yeah your experience that moment that you're trying out you know uh, comedy in in front of people for the first time for the first time i was very afraid uh -huh. very afraid and uh, after that some people talked to me and said they just taught me how to nini how to be uh, how to not be afraid they're telling you how to manage yourself when you stand in front of people mm -hmm. so the next time I stood in front of people to perform so I was no longer afraid presentation yeah <laughs> I was no longer afraid the third time I was no longer afraid and the audience was good and it's the response of the audience that makes you know if you are doing something good so mm -hmm. that you keep on keeping on mm -hmm. So even the first audience was fine, the second audience fine, the third audience fine. I've not performed a lot. Mm -hmm. You mostly write? Yeah, I mostly write. Uh -huh. But uh, the little I have, I love the response and I'm still on the road going to the destination. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Um, I mean, I'm very, very encouraged that you were courageous enough to, to stand up and follow your dreams. Thanks. Maybe you can share with us uh, one, one joke or one, joke. one, <laughs> one act. <laughs> one act. <laughs> one <Yes>. act. <laughs> so let's take like someone has two SIM cards. It's a joke. Uh -huh. Someone has two SIM cards. So I'm asking someone. If you have a phone that has two SIM cards, how do you call that phone? Instead of saying it's a dual SIM phone, they say it's called SIM SIM. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. Thank you. Sim Just sim. created randomly. <laughs> really? Really. Off the top of your head. It's part of things I've written, I know them. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's impressive. Thanks. And to the people along the way that you've met who've discouraged you from, you know, following up on your dream, what are some of the sentiments that you've um, heard from people? There are people who are encouraging. There are people who are discouraging or who will pull you down from home. Mm -hmm from the wider community as you go but you should know how to just focus if something good comes that can be of benefit to you you take it if something negative comes that can throw you down you know how to discard it and keep on keeping on oh yeah yes yeah. And for somebody who's watching and maybe yeah. they're going through the same experience, maybe yes. you can share with us some of the positive and the negative comments that um, you've gotten and how you've managed to, you know, uh, pick out the good and use that as, as a fuel to your fire. You find there are people who are knowledgeable in the field or they have been there for long enough mm -hmm. and they tell you you've got the potential. You see, he hasn't seen a lot what you do over a long period of time, like it's the first time this person is seeing you, mm -hmm. but they say you've got potential, that's encouraging, that's encouraging because you are at peace, you know you are at peace and you can do that now, oh, yeah. because this person has seen the potential, so at least uh, twice or thrice in the past, like someone said I've got the potential, 
So that makes me believe in myself. Yeah. What about the negative? Someone can't really say it to your face, but they will do things or make snide remarks that you think you can make it, you think you can make it on your own, this thing is hard, you need to know people here and there. But as I say, if you are focused and if you know good things to choose to benefit you and the negative things to discard, it's even, it's fine, the road is fine. Only if you choose to focus on the negative, then you find the road bumpy. But if you choose to be peaceful and uh, follow your road and know what you are looking for and where you are going, and if you know you are on the right path, mm -hmm. no, no negative remark can make you leave the way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's very good. Thank That's you. very good um, inspiration even for the viewers watching at home. And Thanks. as we wind up our first uh, segment of this discussion, yeah. um, do, picking up from what you've just mentioned, yes. do you have to know people to make it in the world of comedy, especially being you know, a woman? Yeah, so like in this country, yes, you have to know certain people because the industry is not big enough like in... Let me say USA. Mm -hmm. In America, the industry is so big, you can make it from any part of the country. And also in the US, they have the entertainment capital. So they are always on the lookout for upcoming and good talent. They have their platforms and they have everything in place. The only thing they are looking for is the upcoming people so as to join the mainstream man to continue. But I think in this country, you have to there isn't really the big space, the big comedy or entertainment space, mm -hmm. like in the developed countries. Yeah, it's small, it's like close-knit, so it's in a way you need to know someone so that you make it. Mm -hmm. But that aside, still in this country there are people who have come from down and worked to even not really the comedians, even the other artists. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that for as long as you are determined and you work hard, you will still make up come. Yeah, yeah, you will still make it if you focus and if you are determined mm -hmm. and if you know you are on the right path and you have the right mind for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amazing, amazing. Great yes. stuff there, Check. Yes. Uh, we're taking a short break. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, do keep it she power right here on WTV Kenya. Hello viewers and welcome back to She Power right here on WTV Kenya. Today we are focusing on women in comedy. I'm joined on set by uh, a Chiang. Malina Chiang. Welcome back. Thanks. She is an upcoming comedian and she's just been sharing with us her experience and her, her choosing to follow her true passion which is comedy. And getting back into our discussion, um, Emeline, um, maybe you can tell us. Yes. for the people wondering and yes. it's something that is always on everyone's mind especially when you choose something very unique to um to to pursue in life yes. such as comedy yes. does comedy pay does what you do pay does it um feed your family at the end of the day does it give you bread and butter <laughs> it pays well i can just say it pays in the end mm -hmm. yeah after all these baby steps after all the keeping on and getting to the final destination mm -hmm. When I look at, uh, let's say, I mostly uh, admire the foreign ones. Mm -hmm. When I look at uh, like a guy like Kevin Hart, he started hard and he started down. And gradually, he used to say it was hard because in America you have to work twice as hard mm -hmm. as a white person to make them believe in you. Mm -hmm. So he started it hard. He kept on and uh, looking at where he has reached now, and in the short time it has taken him, in the end it pays. If you work hard, if you believe in yourself, in the end it's, it's good. You, you get in a good place. Oh yeah. Yes. Amazing, amazing. Now, do you think, um, both uh, locally and globally, that women are overshadowed by the male counterparts? One, in influence, yes. Yes. and even in the number of fans that they have, and why? Yes. 
It's because people think it's the men who are supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. It's something that people have in them. Mm -hmm. when, when they think funny, they automatically think it's the men who are supposed to be funny. Mm -hmm. So yes, they have more influence, even locally, even abroad. And yes, they have more fans. But still, if the women do their part well, like the late Joan Rivers, she was a comedian. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of fans, she was uh, well known, she was good in what she does and they took what she did seriously and she was respected in that industry. Uh, judging by the way people showed their support after she died, mm -hmm. yeah, they valued what she did. And so I think in uh, the Western world they value so much what these women are doing, more than in Africa, mm -hmm. but still there is the space, there is the space for anyone upcoming. Mm -hmm. So time will tell or time will judge. I can just say that as time goes by. The yes. situation, situation should improve. Yes. Okay, I look forward to that. Yes. Let's talk about the Kenyan uh, comedian scene and yes. what are your thoughts about it? Do you think we are, we've become stagnant because, you know, we keep churning out the same uh, same comical shows, Stuff. the same comical um, events and, and shows. Are we stuck? Can we not move forward? I think we are stagnant in a way. Mm -hmm. The reason I say so is because I was, I do read about uh, the Kenyan ones and mostly the foreign ones because mm -hmm. the foreign ones have gone far. Yes. So at least yeah, I tend to look at them and ask mm -hmm. how they did it, what they did. Mm -hmm. So like in South Africa, they say like 10 years ago, it wasn't even common to find a comedy show or a platform. Mm -hmm. And then you see this guy, Trevor Noah, he came from that place where there is not even a platform. And he created the platform. He worked it hard. He started uh, touring Africa-wide, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, crossing over. And now he's in US and I think total in the, the total number of years, he hasn't done it for like even 12 years. It's less, less than 10, I hear that. So when I want to compare that to Kenya, though the South African industry is bigger, mm -hmm. but if I wanted to use that to compare to Kenya, I think uh, he has done a lot in a short time. Mm -hmm. It's a short time for him to have uh, conquered the African continent and gone ahead to the American scene because America has a bigger scene that has lasted lots of years. It's, it's going nearly 80 years. Mm -hmm. So when I compare that to Kenya, I think uh, the Kenyan industry has been there nearly 15, 20, 25 years, but I have not really gone as far as him. So I think uh, there is a way in which maybe the Kenyan scene is lagging in a way. There are one or two who are doing hard and going out, but generally, to some extent, there is a lag. Mm -hmm. And uh, there should be there should be some uh, something to push them, the Kenyan comedians, to want to conquer the world, not just the country. Oh yeah, oh yeah, most definitely. And what yes. do you think is is pulling us back? What what avenues haven't we exploited? And um, what can different stakeholders do? You know, the comedians, um, artistic societies, the government under the different relevant ministries. What are we not all doing as stakeholders to make sure that our comedy um, scene is taken to the next level? Mostly, as I've also seen the trend, Kenyans tend to love this tribal coping comedy. Mm -hmm. The ones where copy someone's voice or imitate someone's tribe. Yes, they love that. Mm -hmm. Kenyans love that, makes them laugh. But uh, in a world we live in now, mm -hmm. it's good to work it for, like the whole world, not just Kenyans, because the world has become like a global village. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's time like to cater for the interests of everyone. It's nice if you have a foreigner come to the country and laugh at uh, what is offered because mostly if you see the foreigners and someone makes a joke, 
you will see the Kenyans laughing and the foreigner will be left hanging. Yeah, wondering. Yes. <laughs> and they are, I will always mention these foreign ones. There is a guy like Mr. Bean. He doesn't even speak, but by the actions he makes, he makes anyone laugh, even a deaf person, even an Asian person, an Arabian person, an African person. Yeah. So we should uh, maybe diversify, not just do the tribal or, or imitation comedy. Mm -hmm. There are many avenues to check out and work from. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. amazing. And um, maybe you can tell us, what are your plans as, you know, Emeline Acheng Simba, upcoming yes. comedian, yes. to take things to the next level in the Kenyan comedy scene? I'm still sending proposals here and there, mm -hmm. checking out for openings and telling these guys in the industry to, they should create the space for the upcoming ones to showcase what they have and uh, to also give room for new the those who run the tv sector mm -hmm. to give room for a different kind of show it's still a comedy show but a different kind because in those western countries mm -hmm. yeah there are comedy shows but they are never alike oh, yeah. you can find even 10 they are never alike the format the content how they are laid out they are still comedy shows, they still make people laugh, they still have interviews inside, but there is a difference. Yeah. So they should have the variety or the diversity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. And as we wind up our, this part of our discussion, yes. um, where do you see yourself in um, the next couple of years? I would like to produce my own clips the way a local Ugandan comedian does. Mm -hmm. Can see me? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I think uh, the ones I write, I would like to produce them into humorous clips the same way she does. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I want. Amazing. Yeah. We wish you all the best, and you know what? Yes. Um, anywhere we can help here at She Power, yes. we'll be willing to do that. Okay, thanks. You're most welcome. Thank you, Acheng. It's thanks. about that time where we get into our She Fun Facts. Yeah. Welcome back viewers, this is She Fun Facts. I have upcoming comedian Emmeline Acheng Simba yes. and she's going to be sharing with us some interesting facts about herself. Um, Acheng, tell us, which Kenyan comedians do you follow on social media? <laughs> on social media? Uh -huh. I follow that Kansime. Kenyan, Kenyan. Let's start Kenya, off with the Kenyan, Kenya. before we get to <laughs> I follow... Papa Firanula, I think, is a comedian and uh -huh. Will Broad. <laughs> I think they are comedians. Will Broad is really funny. And I think they make people laugh. Uh -huh. Yeah. What about uh, regionally and now in, on the international front? Regionally, I follow Kansime. Uh -huh. On the international front, I follow Kevin Hart everywhere. Every <laughs> latest, even the show he had last night, if there was, I know it. Uh -huh. In a foreign country, I follow it. Uh -huh. I follow him everywhere all the time. Amazing. So yeah. it's safe to say that's your role model in the comedy world. Yeah, because he has conquered a tough industry. Uh -huh. In the US, you have to work like twice as hard oh, yeah. to get where he has get uh -huh. with no resources the way the whites have. Uh -huh. So the determination he had and the hard work, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. Maybe you can share with us what one of your favorite um, um, jokes. Or, or performances by either of your of your favorite um, comedians. A favorite joke. Yes. Still, that Sim can see me. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. Yeah, I once performed that Sim Sim. I was pride in Westlands. There was a talent show, and the audience lo loved that. And uh -huh. later, someone saw me outside and still calls me Sim Sim. <laughs> so they loved it, and I remembered it just kafla like this when you asked. Uh -huh. But. Uh, <laughs> I love when can see me. I think she robbed someone of a phone, uh -huh. and after running with it shortly, she realizes it's some kebe. Uh -huh. Then she comes back to abuse the owner of the phone. <laughs> that as big as you are, as smart as you look, you have this nonsense called a phone. <laughs> so it makes me laugh because she's like, it takes such a 
a person of a hard head to go back to someone you've robbed Imagine. to say so Imagine. and to do that. Yeah. Back your phone. Yeah, you are big and you walk here looking like a minister and you have a mkebe for a phone. Oh. She points out the faults in that phone. It doesn't have this, it doesn't have this. Uh -huh. I love that. Consume, consume is awesome. Yeah. And uh, moving on to our next question, who is your yes. favorite musician and why? Favorite musician? Uh -huh. Kirk Franklin. I love gospel songs and I have stayed along in the church a long, a long, a long, like more than 10 years. So it's like home. So when I turn, yeah, <laughs> the songs make you feel at peace. Even if you felt like inner, you have inner struggles by listening to them, a peace comes over you. And I know it happens for many others. Yes. Alright, so what's your favorite hairstyle? I love traditional African. I braid, I plate. Uh -huh. Yeah, braids, plates. Okay, yeah. Alright, your favorite meal? My favorite to me. <laughs> <laughs> I like a lot of things. Uh -huh. But I love chapati and I love fried chicken. Uh -huh. Yeah. Alright, yes. I like that. Now, on to uh, my favorite part. Of yes, yes. We like to improve our English. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're going to repeat this tongue twister for us three times. <laughs> yes. So here you go. Seth at Sainsbury sells thick socks. Seth at Sainsbury sells thick socks. A bit faster. <laughs> Seth at Sainsbury sells thick socks. Amazing. I give you an A. a Seth at Sainsbury sells thick socks. I give you an A plus. <laughs> Thank okay, you. I give you an A plus. Thanks. Thank you so much for um, joining us here on Shoe Power today. Yeah. I must say I've had a really, really good um, conversation with you. Yeah. And I think we definitely wish you all the best as yes. we continue to uh, climb up the ladder in the comedy world. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been Shoe Power right here on WTV Kenya. I've been your host, Linda Kruger. Today we've been focusing on the role of women in the comedy industry, yes. both locally and even internationally. I've been joined by Emeline Achen Simba, an upcoming comedian who has followed her passion amidst all odds. Do remember this is the show where we inspire you, whether a man or a woman, through inspiring women's stories. If you picked up a pointer or two, remember, keep it here. Same time, same place.